Thank you, Professor Eric, for the introduction. Uh, uh, again, uh, good morning and welcome, everyone. Um, we are in day two of the conference, and uh, this is session five on automation in agriculture. Um, so our first speaker is remote, Dr. Shen Hin Lim. Can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you, yep. Okay, uh, that's awesome. Um, so our first speaker is Dr. Shen Hin Lim. He's from School of Engineering, University of Wikato. Uh, the title of his talk is New Zealand Robotics, Automation and Sensing, Roadmap and, and Horticulture Robotics. Professor, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. So uh, I'm Hin. So I'm currently a senior lecturer in University of Wakato. And um, also one of my positions that I'm doing as well is also the chair of New Zealand Robotics Automation and Sensing. So I'll give you a bit more background of what um, NZRES actually stands for. So um, NZRES actually has um, been built by all the roboticists that we have in New Zealand itself. So it actually consists of all the representatives from eight universities that we got, and also some from the uh, government, and also some of the uh, coming from the industry as well. So you can see from the logo that we have there, we have about um, 11 counterparts that we have, and we are still actually growing too. So like I mentioned before, I'm the current chair um, and we have uh, 20 members. So what we are doing is our intention is really to make uh, the collaboration between uh, application, which is from the industry side, what kind of problem they are actually facing. And also from an academic is basically trying to uh, find the problem and find the research perspective and trying to make something that work. So one of the main topics that I'm going to talk about is in uh, robotics um, in horticulture, which I'm going to touch upon in the later part of the slides. So um, one of the things that we have pushed quite a lot is what we call as a postgraduate seminar. So postgraduate seminar is something that we try to engage from between the postgraduate students, also the undergraduate students in the research field, and also for them to engage with the industry partners. And the industry partners are the one that's um, stating what they want to see, uh, whether they see this thing they like, and they are also the one um, that give the prize to the winner of the presentations. So uh, one of the main things that I want to touch upon today is basically the roadmap. So New Zealand, even though we are actually a small country, we only have about um, four to five million uh, populations that we have here, um, but we are actually really, really interested in uh, robotics. So we have about 84 developers, we have 43 integrators and about 870 researchers. And uh, New Zealand actually has about 1 billion revenues and we actually uh, employ about um, 3,200 people, the one that we got. So the main sectors that we work into uh, is basically in manufacturing. So we did a lot of um, on the agriculture side, uh, basically dealing with uh, beef, lamb, uh, the processing, also milk. And then the other one is the services, which is coming down into the um, covering of um, the tourism and everything as well, the one that we got here. So we break it down. Uh, basically, the roadmap is really want to capture the states of robotics in New Zealand itself. We want to show what is actually happening, uh, what is the current state of art, what are the things that we're actually good at. And this is really an overview of everything that is encompassing of um, the New Zealand robotics automation and sensing. They actually broken down into four bits. So one is the academic research, which is where I'm coming from, from the university sites. Um, yeah, also the industry, how we're actually trying to uh, push further into what robotics, also automation and sensing can help in the technology sites. And we have funding. Funding is basically the one that are trying to uh, push how much the technology can go ahead. And finally, we got the government um, side of it as well, which is supporting what we are trying to do there. So in um, basically what I mentioned before, main thing that we actually have is both manufacturing and services. If we break it down further, we are actually looking into six different things. So we actually have works that in the agriculture and aquaculture, we have work in the horticulture and forestry, um, manufacturing, consumer and professional services, 
construction and infrastructures and healthcare. So all of us actually has that quite a lot uh, as a New Zealand itself. We actually have done quite a lot of different things, which is mainly being covered by these six different parts that we have. So I just right now, what I'm trying to give you is really just a bit of where we are and how we are actually dealing with things. So in terms of the agriculture and aquaculture, we have exported goods such as milk powder, meat, seafood, and wool. And it actually are covering about 65% of New Zealand primary sectors. And then agriculture by itself is actually covering about 4.3% of the GDP um, in, back in 2018. And also the aquaculture actually cover about 0.4%, which is really um, um, growing at the moment. So I believe previously someone mentioned about uh, that the underwater robots is actually something that are being looked at. Uh, we are also quite interested in that. Um, so in the next time, if I actually able to have the chance again, then I will talk about more about the aquaculture side. Whereas in the horticulture and forestry, uh, we are actually thinking that the demand for the fruit and vegetables in NZ is actually expected to be 33% higher by 2043. So um, basically, this is really answering uh, what we have for zero for hunger, because I think that's the main thing that's been bring. Uh, say that by 2030, we want to make sure that nobody will actually get starving and everything as well. In the manufacturing side, uh, we are actually looking into six different ones in particular. Uh, the number seven is just other manufacturing. We have food and beverage, wood and paper, machinery and equipment, uh, chemicals and finery, and so forth. So this is really trying to uh, deal with a lot of our enterprises. New Zealand, because it's a very small population, so we are actually dealing a lot with the small, medium enterprises than a big kind of uh, company, which is what we stand for, SMEs. So in terms of the consumer and uh, professional services, um, the retail trade actually has generated about 96 billion uh, with the three largest sectors with the supermarket, motor vehicles and parts, as well as food and beverages. So all of them are actually intertwining and actually connected to what we're actually dealing with. So we have a lot of companies um, actually working mainly around the UGVs, logistics and packing to actually help to generate so that we actually can answer the, uh, the needs that actually required from everywhere else. In terms of construction and infrastructures, um, definitely has more and more. Uh, while our population is small, but we actually has the government support to actually try to push much more initiatives because we get to see more and more people and they're actually trying to get uh, a better cost living um, that we have in here. And the last thing, which is what we are actually quite proud of is our healthcare. So in our healthcare itself, uh, I think we are actually one of the top in the whole world. Uh, basically is because we're actually passionate about it. So breaking down into the fundamental application area, uh, I mentioned before that um, NZRES is really trying to link between the uh, applications, which is the industry side, what they're actually trying to answer so that they actually can bring forward to actually bring things out to the uh, community. As well for the research side, which is what we're doing, we are actually dealing with a lot of different research. We are dealing with a lot of prototyping uh, and we're actually looking into all the different things. Then we can actually bring it to the, uh, the application side to actually make things work. To make this, even further, like I mentioned before, um, we have actually created something what we call as like a postgraduate seminar. It's really trying to let the students see what are the things out there. It's not everything in the academia, it's not everything in the university, you just do your research and things. We want them to think about the kind of research can be groundbreaking, that can be helpful for the community out there. Um, the other thing that we do as well is really trying to uh, get the younger students, which is like from the high school and the primary school to actually be engaged in the school robotics so that they can actually understand what they are actually dealing with, why is it important, and it is good if they're interested to actually foster them further to work in that area. So that is really just, um, I just want to give you a very brief overview of what the New Zealand Robotics Automation and Sensing, um, the state of it that's actually happening in here. And now one of the parts that I'm actually gonna talk about, which is one slice, is basically mainly on the horticultural robotics. 
one of the reasons why the horticultural robotics has been uh, quite popular that we have because uh, first New Zealand are the one that has been producing a lot of different produce, uh, high quality ones. So for example, like asparagus, uh, kiwi fruits, um, and also like um, many different kinds of uh, fruits that we're actually dealing with here. To deal with this, um, I, we are really application oriented. So we are actually starting with what we call as the end user with problem. The end user with problem is basically the, um, the growers or the company, they say they have a problem, can actually deal with it. Then us as a universities, we actually become the research provider. We are the one that say that, okay, you have something that uh, we are actually really keen to actually work on. And we are trying to give you a solutions to actually make the thing work, to actually answer the problem that you're working at. And when our research um, work has got to a point, then we will actually say that uh, industry, we say that this is a very good product. You can actually make this work. You can actually commercialize it so that in the end, the commercialized product can be actually used to answer the problem that we have as an end user. Okay. And basically because all of this would not work without money. So we are actually definitely uh, uh, have the support from the government and also maybe different types of companies that actually give us money to actually do the current development, whether it's in the research provider side, the industry side, or actually going back into the um, community side, which is the growers or the companies that we got there. So uh, breaking it down, we are actually looking into four different projects that I want to talk about. So the first one is the horticultural robotics. Uh, this is basically a project that mainly working on the kiwi fruits as well as the uh, apples harvesting. Uh, the second one is what we call as Maratech, which is basically trying to bring artificial intelligence into horticultures. The third one, which is a project that I led, uh, is actually called the asparagus harvester. And the last thing is basically some of other things that we cover, which is actually coming from different companies like Axis 7, Green Tech, which is basically a New Zealand grown companies that we have here. So I hope that the video is working over there. Good, I felt that it's actually working. So this one in here is basically, uh, we've been doing a lot of work in the uh, kiwi fruits orchards. So what we did in here is we are trying to actually do two things for the, um, for the kiwi fruit. One is the pollination, and then the second one is the harvesting. So to actually make that work, we actually built a platform that can actually work on two different things. Of course, it's not at the same time. The first one that is being shown in here is basically we can use the platform to actually identify where all the flowers are so that we can actually do the pollination. So the one that you can see, which is popping up right now, is basically showing how the platform has all the things that actually show the pollinations, the one that we got. So it is going into um, one kilometers per hour, which is basically maybe 3.3 .3, uh, meters per second. So the other things that we have in here is apple harvesting. This is like a growing. I think a lot of the projects has been looked into that before. So I think one of the one uh, previously, which is like abundant robotics, basically at the end of the day, this is something that we are actually keen about because apples are one of the main produce that one that we have. This one that is currently showing is the kiwi fruit harvesting, which is basically trying to pick the kiwi fruits, which is based on the same platform as well. And then we want to actually pick as many kiwi fruits, the one that we got here. Surprisingly, of all the things, the one that we have, we find that it's actually all the data that we actually captures and cover actually give us a much more understanding of what the kiwi fruit orchard is actually doing. So when you can see on the um, video that you see here, you can see there's all the multicolors, the one that you see. All the colors are actually for this one, for this example, is showing the height of all the kiwi fruits. So it's actually helping us to actually understand and see where the uh, kiwi fruits and things. And as you go along, then we can actually do all the yield estimation. The next one, which is the project that I talk about, which is the part that I'm with, um, is basically we are actually trying to further engage intelligence into horticultures. We look into three different crops. One is the grape wine pruning. Uh, we, are, we have a, quite a strong winery industry here as well. Uh, the other one is blueberry harvesting. And the last one is not apple harvesting, but rather is apple fruit thinning. 
So to actually make this work, what we do is uh, we actually build research platform. The research platform is to basically uh, trying to gather information from both sides. That's why it's an overarch one, the one that we built in here. So this is currently in the remote control based on the video that we are showing. We're actually controlling it. And the other one is we actually managed to make the research platform to actually move autonomously so that it is not being controlled by the user anymore. The whole purpose why we're actually trying to build like an Orage platform, the one that we got in here, is so that we can actually capture the three-dimensional uh, data that we have um, of the things that we're looking at. So for this one here, it's basically is the grade one tree. We are looking into this right now. It's basically the way the grape wine is actually working is every year we need to actually remove as many canes as much as we can. And then we keep a couple to keep so that it actually grow into a new canes and then a new grapes. So they actually come with a lot of wineries, the one that we have here. So this one is actually so that we can capture from both ends from the left and the right to actually give a very good representation. Then after the decision making, then we can actually use the end effectors to go into the pro, uh, to the grape wine tree and the canes to actually do the cutting. So it actually goes into the different parts by knowing that which one that we go and then which one that we should be cutting and then everything else will be actually taken over. Then at that point, then the remaining one will be then will be tied down and then for the new season, it will grow to a new uh, grape wine. So actually go into the next winery industries, the one that we have. So far, all the projects that we have here are all actually working in their own silo scenarios. But then uh, in the upcoming season, which is coming in about two months, we are trying to integrate everything together and saying that coming everything from sensing to find which one to do the cutting, then finally using these end effectors to actually cut the one that we actually has decided. The other one that I kind of touch upon is apple fruit thinning. So to actually get good fruit apples, we actually has to remove as many smaller fruits as possible so that they leave all the remaining nutrients to the one that we want to have a good, nice and apples growing. To actually do that, we actually had to look into multiple different kinds of any factors. The one that you see before is the suctions, which is the one that is actually twisting. And then the one that you're currently seeing as well is basically is actually piercing. So I'm just going to let this uh, video to run it again, just to show you again what is actually happening in here. So this one is the one that I mentioned, which is a suction one. So you actually hold it and then you twist it to remove the apples. This one here is the one that's actually doing the sliding, which is going to hold it. And then you roll it to actually remove the apples. And then the last one in here is actually pierce the apples to actually remove it. So we're actually looking into many different kinds of factors. And because the season that we have is only running like two or three months, we always want to produce as many different kinds of end effectors so that we can actually test it out and see which one is the best one to go forward. The last one, which is the project that I um, personally led is, is basically is asparagus harvester. So asparagus has been a good high value crops, but it has been dwindling because of the labor issues. We've been using, uh, the growers have been trying to get as many labels as possible, but because of the increasing price and everything and so forth, and actually trying to get people to do the asparagus removal is very difficult because it's backbreaking, it's too labor intensive. So what we do here is we actually break it down into two different parts. The first part is trying to identify which is the asparagus to remove. And then uh, the one to do the cutting, uh, the cutting bit, which is basically trying to mention that this is harvestable, which is presented by the green line. And then the red one is basically we have to come back every day. So what the manual labor is doing in here is they have to grow, go through the whole field every day to actually find the one that is actually long enough to cut. So we use a lot of machine learning, which is the one that you show on the left-hand side, so that we actually can do it in real time to identify which one to cut. And then we further refine it to actually see which one is the one that is cuttable and which one is not the cuttable bit. Then after that, what we did is we built a prototype, which is the front bit is the camera to doing all the visions. And then we want to show that we can actually find the right asparagus to cut. 
So the end bit is basically just a two-dimensional linear rail, which is moving and trying to cut the asparagus. So what we have done in here, we actually built the prototype. We brought this machine all the way to uh, United States to do the field trials. Uh, basically, this is the cutting. It actually shows that it can actually identify which asparagus to cut and which one to go forward as well. From this uh, field, uh, the field trials that we have, we realized that the things that we done say, yes, we can find it is, is actually quite accurate, everything is good. But the end bit, which is the cutting bit, is actually way too slow. So we built up another one a year later. Uh, this is the one that we actually tried in New Zealand uh, because of the COVID-19 scenarios. This is back in 2020. So we tried it in New Zealand. We actually make a more sophisticated bit of the cutting. So in terms of the cutting that we have here, we may actually make more like a three-dimensional rather than two-dimensional. So we actually can do the cutting that we have here. And then if it's things that we actually missed out, then we actually can go backwards, which is like being shown here to actually do the cutting so that we actually can cover much more areas about um, the asparagus that we cut. So as you can see from the video right now that's actually happening, you can see the things are actually being tractor towed rather than a fully autonomous because the main thing that we are trying to uh, focus in here is we want to make sure that the vision is actually working. Then after that, we're actually trying to make sure that the cutting is actually sufficient enough and reach to the speed, the one that we go. Then after that, we can then get the um, industry partners to actually uh, put in the autonomous um, platform to actually make everything work as itself. So this project has been going through the government funding and right now we have the uh, our our partners, which is Robotics Plus, has taken over this project and trying to make the first commercial product of Asparagus Harvester. So I have shown the couple of different projects, the one that we have in there. I just want to show you a bit into like where we actually start with. So you know, like I actually showed how everything works in the field because we can't actually do everything within the two to three months span of the season. So that's why we actually have to replicate how the fruitless is actually being grown, how to actually get into all the different things. And then we're trying to set the things up as close as possible in the, in the lab itself. So you can see in here, we, there's actually four different ones. So all the different um, thinning and effectors, the one that we have, are the ones that we have shown that actually works in the lab which has been tested for a couple of months. We say that it's actually good enough. We want to actually bring it out to actually test in the field so that when we go to the field, we can test multiple rather than saying that we can test one in the field. It does not work. We have to come back the next year to actually do it. The other product that we actually has uh, looked into as well is uh, rock melon. So this one in here is basically uh, actually in the lab as well. This is an ongoing project. So we actually get the uh, people to actually, um, not the people, um, the machine to actually go through the whole thing to detect where the fruits are, to see whether it's actually um, to ready to harvest. And then we pick it up, we have knowing where the location is and then to harvest it itself. So we have a lot of different aspects to actually build this. We actually built everything from the, um, the undergraduate uh, product, which is more like a project, which is like a final year. And then we see there's a prospect, we actually bring it to the masters and PhD. And then if it's actually good enough, then we actually bring it up to the industry to, for them to actually further produce to a commercial product. So what I've shown here in here uh, so far is uh, basically uh, really just um, the overview of the different horticulture uh, products that we have done here. So some of the projects are still ongoing. Some of the projects has already finished or actually being into industries. So our intentions are really trying to make something that is actually applicable and so forth. So just to finish off, I just want to show you that uh, this is another kind of platform that we have built. This is the same overarch platform, but it's much higher to, so that we can actually get the information of the apple fruitless thinning. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you.